Our Keeping Them Honest report tonight is all about the all-too-brief argument that Donald Trump had with himself today over something that in the fact-based world is simply a fact. Russia interfered in the 2016 presidential election. They did it to hurt Hillary Clinton and help Donald Trump. You don't have to like one candidate or another to believe that. It just is. Russia attacked, Donald Trump benefited. How much, what impact it had, all questions that could be argued and yelled about for as long as we want. But it happened. The intelligence community came to that conclusion first. The president was briefed during the campaign on it. And the work of Robert Mueller's team confirms it. These are all facts. So shouldn't be a big deal that the president would acknowledge them, except it would be because he never has. But this morning, he actually did. For the first time ever, the president of the United States acknowledged them, tweeting, Russia, 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 that's all you heard at the beginning of this witch hunt hoax. And now Russia has disappeared because I had nothing to do with Russia helping me to get elected. I had nothing to do, he said, with Russia helping me to get elected. Now, right there, after denying it for two years, he says Russia helped him get elected. He had nothing to do with it, though. That was this morning at three minutes to eight Eastern time. 42 minutes and three seconds later, the simple acknowledgement of a simple fact was swirling down the memory hole. No, Russia did not help me get elected. You know who got me elected? You know who got me elected? I got me elected. Russia didn't help me at all. So if the president sounds a bit agitated there. He was just getting started. Here's his take on Robert Mueller. I think he is a total conflicted person. I think Mueller is a true never-Trumper. He's somebody that dislikes Donald Trump. He's somebody that didn't get a job that he requested that he wanted very badly. And then he was appointed. And despite that, and despite $40 million, 18 Trump haters, including people that work for Hillary Clinton and some of the worst human beings on earth, they got nothing. They got nothing, which you can file away under the heading of things John Gotti used to say. You can also file it in the enormous file titled Things the President Said That Are Not True. I won't go through all the falsehoods there, but they did indict a lot of Russians and the President's National Security Advisor and the campaign chairman. Anyway. That phrase, some of the worst human beings on earth, it also, it kind of is similar how he described murderous gang members. You wouldn't believe how bad these people are. These aren't people. These are animals. Well, that was the president last year talking about members of MS-13. A year later, similar language now reserved for long-serving criminal justice professionals who served under a Republican former FBI director. The president wasn't through, though, with him or with spreading falsehoods about him. I think he's totally conflicted because, as you know, he wanted to be the FBI director, and I said no. As you know, I had a business dispute with him after he left the FBI. We had a business dispute. Uh, not a nice one. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't happy with what I did, and I don't blame him, but I had to do it because that was the right thing to do. But I had a business dispute, and he loves Comey. Uh, you look at the relationship that those two so whether it's love or a deep like, but he should, he was conflicted. Leaving aside the secondhand homoeroticism, absolutely not one single thing he said there is true. The president likes to suggest that Mueller's bitter because he turned him down for a third term running the FBI. Keep him honest, take a look at what his own former chief strategist, Steve Bannon, told Mueller's investigators under oath. Quoting now, as for Mueller's interview for FBI director, Bannon recalled that the White House had invited Mueller to speak to the president to offer a perspective on the institution of the FBI. Bannon said that although the White House thought about beseeching Mueller to become director again, he did not come in looking for the job. Again, that was sworn testimony. That's in the Mueller report. Sworn testimony versus the guy on a lawn yelling. As for this now legendary, in the president's mind, business dispute that the president makes so much about, Mueller himself discloses it fully in footnote 5, 529 of his report on page 80, volume two, in case you're following at home, safe to say it's not what the president makes it out to be. Quote, in October 2011, Mueller resigned his family's membership from Trump National Golf Club in Sterling, Virginia, in a letter that noted that, quote, we live in the district and find that we are unable to make full use of the club and that inquired whether we would be entitled to a refund of a portion of our initial membership fee, which was paid in 1994. About two weeks later, the controller of the club responded that the Mueller's resignation would be effective October 31st, 2011, and that they would be, quote, placed on a wait list to be refunded on a first resigned, first refunded basis. Steve Bannon told the Mueller team, I can't believe we were talking about this. Steve Bannon told the Mueller team, but we have to. I mean, this like the president said, is making it sound as if it's this clash of titans. 
he told the president this was not a conflict of interest and to claim so would be, and I'm quoting Bannon now, ridiculous and petty. In other words, his own chief strategist at the time thought the president was reaching, and now he seems to have built it into some kind of boardroom clash of the titans. The real question tonight, though, is why so angry? Don't we all remember a time when he and his people were pleased as punch with the special counsel's work? I think everyone here um, and everyone, frankly, across America was happy. The Mueller investigation is the gold standard. The Mueller report was great. It could not have been better. It said no obstruction, no collusion. It could not have been better. Mr. President, And I do see some people now trying to besmirch the integrity of Director Mueller, Attorney General Barr. That, that is really rich. Really rich indeed. By the way, of course, all those comments were... Uh, talking about Barr's version of the Mueller report, not once actually the Mueller report came out. For perspective now from CNN senior political analyst David Gergen and Jeffrey Tubin, who is back uh, with us. It is pretty amazing, David, to hear the president actually tweet out, I mean, to see him tweet out that uh, Russia helped him get elected. I mean, it lasted for 42 minutes and three seconds, but it was surprising nonetheless. It, it took about 10 minutes probably for White House aides to go racing across the lawn to get to the president. So you got to take that back because mm. <laughs> I'm not sure he knew what he was writing. Uh, but nonetheless, I think he did acknowledge something that was important. But that's the only thing he's acknowledged in a string of lies uh, today. And, you know, the big lie here, Anderson, the last stuff you just went through, is uh, they're all lies. Um, but the big lie is that he keeps arguing basically he, he has been cleared, mm. especially on obstruction. And that simply is not true, despite the gloss that, that uh, the Attorney General Barr has put on it. What we know from the Mueller report is that they, that they, that they just simply did not reach a conclusion on whether he had uh, uh, committed a crime or not. And very, very importantly, they couldn't clear him, mm. that the evidence was such that they, they couldn't clear him. And it wasn't that they couldn't reach a conclusion. It's just that they didn't because, again, of the Department of Justice right. guidelines. A a for prudential reasons, out of fairness to right. Trump, uh, you know, we were here covering this live, uh, the, the 17 minutes on the lawn. And, you know, it, it, it was almost worth it to hear all 17 minutes together. I know. We, thought, we thought, of, to be honest, we <laughs> thought about playing the whole thing because well, it is startling. It, it's just the, the torrent the torrent of lies. I mean, you covered some of them, but you didn't cover all right. of them. And it's just an interesting journalistic question about what our obligation is. I, yes. to, I mean, because, you know, by not pointing this out, right. we, you know, we don't point it out. Well, and then, this is what, I mean, Jim Comey was saying in the town hall that we did, which is, it's one of the ways the president works, is he says lies to you, and then if you... You're like, well, should I, wait a minute, should I just intercede and point out that that's a lie, or do I just remain silent? And if you remain silent, all of a sudden, he sort of co-opted you. Well, and also, if you tell 35 lies and they correct 18, right. you know, you, you have a lot of lies still sort of floating out there in the world. And the, and, and today was, was really... Ex even by his standards, extreme. Well over 10,000 lies and misleading right. statements now and, and counting. Uh, I th the world is watching, and I think we're going to pay a price for it. Uh, earlier today, uh, Anderson, Chancellor Merkel came to Harvard to give the commencement address, mm. very hard-hitting speech, and she pointedly argued how much damage is done in public life when lies are treated as truth and truth is treated as lies. Mm. And I think that's what we're seeing here, and I think the world knows it. We all know it. And we don't. what we don't know is how much damage, how right. long this damage is going to be. And by the way, Angela Merkel grew up in the East German system. Yes. I mean, so <laughs> she, she knows her lies. lies. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, it's pretty extraordinary. The, uh, I mean, also the president seems to be having it both ways. I mean, he claims the Mueller, uh, you know, investigation exonerated him, but at the same time, you know, it's it's this witch hunt, some of the worst human beings on Earth. Right, and, and you know, this is a continuing problem for him, that, that contradiction, because, you know, if Robert Mueller testifies before Congress, and if he merely reads or summarizes the evidence of unobstruction of justice, it's devastating. Mm. And it's not one thing. It's 10 or 11 examples of obstruction of justice. And, you know, he can claim all the exoneration he wants, but when you look at the facts, and people will look at the facts more if it's on television oh, as opposed true. to a written document, it, it, he's he's going to be very angry to see that. What, the, what I find hard to understand is why there's acceleration in the number of lies per day. 
Mm. You know, it was a, a small number in the beginning, but now, as you say, there was a torrent today, and that's pretty standard practice right now. But why? What's it? What? What kind of insecurity is affecting him, or has it in his grip mm. that he would that he is is clearly getting worse? Yeah, or emboldened. I, I emboldened. Don't know. Yeah, yeah, what, that's what a good point. Uh, David Gergen, thank, thank you, Jeff Tubin, as well.